This is WCNY's The Capitol Press Room, and we're joined in the studio by Assemblymember Angelo Santa Barbara, a Capital Region Democrat who's here to discuss legislation designed to increase the ability of people living with spina bifida to access supports and services. And for the purpose of full disclosure, I should note that I worked as the Assemblymember's Director of Communications about a decade ago, well before he started carrying this legislation. Welcome back to the show, Assemblymember. Great to be back, Dave. Thank you. So for starters, what exactly is spina bifida? Spina bifida is a condition that affects the development of the spinal cord and surrounding structures. It affects people in a number of different ways, and it's something that uh, is a condition that uh, affects lifestyle. A lot of times people need a number of supports and services, medical attention for a number of different things uh, that result from spina bifida. So, so you mentioned that it can affect people in different ways. Does that mean there are a variety of outcomes in terms of someone's ability to live with the condition? It might impact them to, to varying degrees? That's exactly right. It, it, it can lead to a number of physical challenges, but also neurological challenges. The bill basically classifies it as a, as a developmental disability under the OPWDD definition. Yeah, according to your bill memo, the state does not consider spina bifida a developmental disability uh, as it would matter for the state office for the people with developmental disabilities. From your perspective, why should the definition be expanded to include spina bifida? Well, it's interesting because at one point in time, spina bifida was a qualifying condition according to OPWDD, and at some point it was removed. However, when you think about other disabilities, you know, the definition of developmental disability and what we just talked about, and when you think about other developmental disabilities that are covered under OPWD, I think this is a disability uh, that fits in exactly what the purpose of what OPWDD is, is to help people with supports, services, coordinated care, which right now is very difficult for anybody that has spina bifida. For myself, you know my son Michael, Mm -hmm. Uh, he's born with autism. I can't imagine him being without the supports and services that he needs on a daily basis. It's similar with spina bifida. There are challenges, there are things that individuals can't do without help and without that coordinated care piece. Sometimes they need to see multiple doctors. There's a number of physical challenges as well. Family struggle, navigating through the healthcare system, accessing services. Our office for people with development disabilities was established for that purpose. So you mentioned autism as an example of a condition that does fall under the definition of a developmental disability that the state utilizes. What other conditions, obviously besides spina bifida, fall under the definition of a developmental disability? Well, just looking at the bill, actually, I'm looking at the bill right now and some of the things I described right in there, uh, which was discussed uh, during committee, the bill adds spina bifida to a number of other developmental disabilities, including cerebral palsy, epilepsy, neurological impairment, and autism is listed as well. So if you were to expand this definition, what is the practical uh, effect of it? What are the services and supports that a family or an individual might be able to access in the future? That's going to vary depending on if it's a medical treatment, what that medical treatment would be. A lot of times there are frequent illnesses associated with spine bifida. There's the time factor, too. There's time spent trying to access and coordinate services. As I said, sometimes you need to see multiple medical professionals. Maybe a procedure needs to be done. There's a number of different things. Think of the uh, educational side of things. Think about disabilities that make it difficult to either attend school or be in, in particular a school settings. So what is the consequence of the landscape right now? Are people with spina bifida simply not accessing services? Does it mean that their families have to work basically another part-time or full-time job to ensure care? What is the ramification of the current system? That's exactly right. That's exactly what's happening. It's resulting in families either not receiving the supports or services at all, or in many cases, families have uh, undertaken costly legal action in order to receive those services. But as I said, there's similar challenges when you think about what OPWDD does cover, experience in the community, There's caregiver duties, out-of-pocket expenses, frequent illnesses, and the excess time spent trying to access and coordinate services, which is a difficult task. In my family, I know with, with my son how difficult that can be. And again, this is about making sure that we identify it as a disability and making sure that we're providing the same supports and services with the other disabilities that I mentioned earlier, and there's, you know, that the list is actually longer than that, uh, making sure we're being inclusive, making sure 
we're providing access to opportunities, making sure we're providing access to care that they're entitled to. Well, we have a limited amount of resources to address the health care needs of all New Yorkers, especially with developmental disabilities. So is there any guarantee that an expanded definition of a developmental disability to encompass spina bifida would translate to more people accessing services, or would it just be a larger pool of people competing for that same piece of pie, so to speak? You know, when it comes to OPWDD, there will be an increased number of services they'll need to provide. However, aside from the cost, you have to weigh it against the, the benefits and the adequate services that will be provided to individuals with spina, spina bifida. I think that should be the goal. If there's a financial piece of that, uh, I think that knowing that people are going to receive the services that they, they need, the services that they deserve, and services that, you know, there's about 4,000 people in New York State that are affected. So you're talking about 4,000 individuals, a lot of them going without these services. That really impacts quality of life. It impacts their ability to overcome challenges, to access medical care and services. And you know, in the Assembly Chamber, we talk about these things all the time. This is what uh, New York State is, is striving for. We're striving to make sure everyone has access, everyone has uh, the supports and services they need. This has been a discussion uh, that's not new. Uh, in this case, this is something that should be included in one of our departments, one of our agencies that's providing these services, and unfortunately it's not. Uh, as I said, at one point it was. I'm not sure the reasoning for removing it. Well, I assume the reason for the change is simply because of costs and they want to spend less money. Uh, not I, to be too cynical. I don't know if that's okay. the reason. I just I noted, uh, as I looked at the history of this, I noted, and I was surprised to see it, that it was at one point listed, and now it's not listed, hence the need for the bill. But it's also positive, uh, uh, you know, some positive news that the bill, as you know, th- did pass the People with Disabilities Committee and is, is, is in ways and means right now, so we're making some progress on it. So I know the Spina, Spina Bifida Association is behind this 100%. Uh, they're pushing for this legislation. They're an organization that has a number of different uh, uh, fundraisers. I know in Schenectady, we have uh, attended their Central Park fundraiser many times. And the people in attendance is what's noteworthy. The last uh, fundraiser they had, uh, the Five Kid Run and Walk, it's the people that are affected that are there, but the families and the communities that show up, it was one of the largest crowds I've ever seen. So there is community support behind this. There are people... uh, that may not be affected themselves, but they know how important this is. So I think communities, not just in my community, not just in Schenectady, but across the state uh, are are pushing for this bill to be passed because uh, they know that it can help people uh, that uh, are going without right now. It's affecting their quality of life, and they're just not able to access a lot of essential needs that could make their life so much better. Well, finally, coming back to that idea of cost, which uh, is to be determined according to the the bill memo, we're in the middle of the budget process right now. So because there is a fiscal implication to this, is this something that is best done within the context of the budget as opposed to a standalone uh, bill? Uh, That that is under discussion right now. I'm hoping that the governor's office will be receptive to that and we can make some progress on getting the funding in place. There's going to be a factor of, you know, we don't know exactly how many services uh, are going to be required or what OPWDD is expecting from this uh, if the bill is passed and put into law. Uh, but they can give us estimates and hopefully we can make a budget uh, allocation uh, that's appropriate uh, with what we would expect if the bill is passed. As I said, around 4,000 people uh, accessing supports and services uh, that OPWDD provides. That is going to have an impact, but... When you look at the, when you look at what you're getting for that cost, it's supporting people with disabilities, it's improving quality of life, it's ensuring inclusivity, uh, all the goals that we're trying to achieve with uh, OPWDD and across the state. Well, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. We've been speaking with Assemblymember Angelo Santa Barbara. He is a Capital Region Democrat. Assemblymember, thanks for visiting us in the studio. Thanks, Dave. Great to be here. Press Room, a production of WCNY Connected, Syracuse.